Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. We are here to talk today about the hollow sun, red dot sight with ACSS reticle. Hollow Sun Technologies, Inc. Yep. You know, it wasn't that long ago, I remember, in tactical shooting land, when you wanted to be tactical Timmy with your gun at the match, uh -huh. that you had to spend 450 500 bucks for a red dot sight that was considered viable. Right. Even for a match. You take these things out from China and they break in a shot, and then you, you, bring, you see the guy come out with the you know, low budget NC Star. Because the first shot counts. Because it's the only one that works. <laughs> but yeah, so people would bring out these budget things, and I get it. I mean, we, we sure. all, money is not infinite. And unfortunately, budget red dots not long ago meant a not working red dot or something that had terrible parallax or wouldn't retain zero or whatever. Right. And this has changed a lot. It has. The first ones to me, and I'm sure that you know, everyone out there has got their choice of which one they prefer. And I'm not saying anyone's better than the other per se. The ones I have experience with. The one that I remember first hitting the market that was, this is a budget red dot that was reliable was Vortex. Okay. The Vortex Spark. I remember that thing was, I, I have a few of them. They've been excellent. They've been yeah. ex excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, you dots. talked me into those. I've had nothing but good luck with them. Sub $200 is what I'm calling budget, by the way. Yep. And um, my Vortex Sparks have been awesome. My first one was a primary arms, uh, like a knockoff of the Burris Fastfire. And was it reliable? No. It uh, died on me the first match I took it to. Interesting, because primary arms now has ones out there that people say are good. This was several years ago. I can't speak for that. So this is not a knock on them or not. I don't know. But Vortex was the first one to me that, that really um, made a difference. Yeah. And they've been great. Now, when you look through a Vortex Spark, there's this weird kind of hue to little it. A little blue. A little blue. But other than that, it really performed the job of an Aimpoint Micro as almost, not as well, but almost as well. It for even had, what, a quarter of the price? It even had, an, it, price, it even had like NV mode, night mm -hmm. vision, if you happen yep. to have NV. Although, I don't, it's weird that you think about putting an NV mode on a $200. Anyways, um, the, um, that said, and they were also mount compatible right. with Aimpoint. So you could go to an Aimpoint mount and put your Vortex on it. And this market's kind of turned into an interesting thing that it wasn't right. long ago. Well, it exists now. The, right, the it does. Low end, but reliable and usable red dot is a thing now. Now, what I this is the Hollow Sun. So what brought my caught my attention about the Hollow Sun wasn't that it was just another sub $200 red dot. It was mm -hmm. that they have a couple different offerings on the market, and this is one of the newest one called the ACSS, or the ACSS right. reticle, which e EOTech did this a long time ago, where they had multiple dots in your field of view on your holographic site, and it was essentially incorporated a BDC. Right. For a 5x6, or even 308 or whatever, you had to know what it was. You had to figure out what your BDC was, and you'd zero it at a specific range, and then dot one was this, and dot two was that, and dot three was that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this one happened to have a chevron, Okay? And that Chevron is your one, your 50, 200, 300 yard zero. So okay. top of the Chevron's your 50, 200, the bottom of the Chevron's your 300, and the dots are subsequent to that. That's or this like four, five, six. Something like that. I don't remember. It doesn't matter at the top. To be honest, the kind of shooting I do with a gun like this rarely extends to 400. Right. So the bottom of the Chevron to the top of the Chevron is generally what I use. However, those dots being there are interesting. And it also has this giant kind of horseshoe thing around it, which is another thing that caught my attention because whatever you guys think of EOTech, I like them. I've had success with EOTechs, but yes. we know that they've had some Bad issues PR. lately, and maybe some problems. And I like that kind of giant circle, okay. that 65 MOA circle, for a couple of reasons. When you're in a dynamic shooting environment, and you know this from 2Gun <laughs> as well, when you bring the gun up, that dot is there, and that's fine, but that giant circle, when it's really close, really helps. <laughs> Boom, it's like a ghost ring. It's like a giant holographic ghost ring. And the Hollow Sun has this giant holographic kind of ghost ring kind of does the same thing. So it kind of brings you that EOTech experience, but it also mm -hmm. gives you the Chevron and the BDC. And by the way, you can turn off that horseshoe as well. There's a setting. So if you don't like that giant circle, you can get nice. rid of it. So I'm like, you know what? Let's pick one of these up. Let's give it a whirl. Um, and I've only shot it in one match so far, mm -hmm. which was the new Arizona Two Gun up in Cowtown, up in Phoenix. Similar to Two Gun Action Challenge match, a little different. And I had fantastic success with this. Yeah. And the BDC was actually useful there because they had targets out at range. Yeah, we were shooting at 300. And this is where an El Cheapo, now this is a Cheapo magnifier, came into play. It's a Vortex magnifier. Yep. And on that range, I flipped it into place. And that BDC actually became visible. The Chevron right. is like nice, clear, crisp image. And it allowed me to engage those long range, pretty hard to see targets. That's it. Right. That's the thing that really jumped out to me about the hollow sun with that particular reticle is I found it to be a little uh, the chevron was useful the dots to me are kind of a waste mm -hmm. in that red dot because you just can't really identify them make them out they're too small to be useful 
but they really shine when you put a, a magnifier behind it. Mm -hmm. So uh, my take on this was if you're gonna, if you're planning on putting a magnifier on, if you want the red dot magnifier combo, instead of say a fixed four power scope or a variable power scope, if this is the, the mechanical setup you're interested in, I think that reticle now makes a lot of sense. You know, it's funny you mentioned primary arms because if it says primary arms exclusive model with ACSS CQB reticle, apparently, I think, I think, I think they've gotten better. No, I think I primary arms actually, I, I don't know, and I don't recall, I, I, I don't nerd out on this too much, but I think primary arms brought the ACSS reticle to the uh, market. Okay. And this is in a primary arms ACSS reticle in hollow sun sight. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, uh, but I agree with what you're saying. If you were to only, if you were not going to put a magnifier behind it, Mm -hmm. I would say don't bother with the BDC setup. It's right. actually kind of distracting. It's not no enough distraction that it was a problem, but until you have the magnifier, you don't get a lot out of it. Right. The chevron's sufficient. And I found that the magnifier, people are, wonder, is a magnifier valuable? And in this setup, with that chevron and that BDC, the magnifier, it, is. it made a big difference. Yeah. It, it kind of turned it into an Ursatz 8 call. Yeah, but you could, exactly. turn, you could turn it on and off. There was a stage that was close range, and I'm like, ooh, I don't want that. And there was a clean stage that was far away. Put it on. It adds weight to the gun, but it really wasn't in the way, mm -hmm. and I think that made a big uh, a, a big help. And so I guess it's kind of a review of the Vortex Cheapo magnifier too. It's actually pretty good. You start adding a magnifier, you start have to wonder about the cost. Right. Two hundred bucks for the hollow sun. Yep. Two hundred something for the magnifier. You're now at four hundred bucks. Right. Do you want to get something that's just one scope that does all that for four hundred bucks? Maybe. I don't know. I've shot red dots and holographic sights for so long that I find this to be my I shoot the best with the holographic sights. Okay. I just plain do. Adjustables, one to sixes, they just screw me up. It just doesn't work for me. It just doesn't. I, I can't speak for durability. I can't speak that this thing has been, so far, reliable. Yep. Hold zero. Has a very has held zero. It has been reliable in terms of running for the entire time I've had it. It has a very crisp image. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice thing. When you look through it, it looks very clear, very crisp. It's not discolored. I think we should point out, a lot of people don't think that you can run a red dot at extended range. That's not true. And the match that where you shot this, and I was taking a look at it there as well, was two what two fifty and three hundred yard uh, steel oh, yeah. red dot magnifier. You, well, you won the match. I won the match. That, that says something. Um, and they it were steel targets. effective. And they were steel targets in field condition. Right. Set. 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 has a feature mm -hmm. which is interesting in that this is text motion so they're and, uh, oh right their yes. meth their method of battery life sust sustenance which you know aim points you put a battery in you forget about it yeah you just turn it on and leave it on yeah you just throw it in the grave after you die to take it to Valhalla because the battery still works right that's one thing a lot of the cheaper budget sites don't have going right. for them so what they've done here is they've made it so that this will turn off automatically and when you pick it up it automatically turns back on how reliable is that? That makes a lot of sense. How reliable is that? I don't know. But what I can tell you that playing this game at home, where I'm like, it's off. Oh, it's on. It's off. Oh, it's on. I can't catch it being off. Okay. I'm kidding around a little. But the fact is, is that there is no noticeable dis delay from bringing the gun from low rated up and not having the scope be there. Okay. So I can't tell that it's ever off. But I can tell that if I leave it on the desk long enough and then kind of look behind it and sneak up on it, I'm like, oh, yep, it's off. It's off. But the minute okay. I pick the gun up, it's on. So I don't know how reliable that is in terms of durability, right? But Long in terms term might have issues. In terms of its functional purpose, so far for me, it has actually succeeded. Nice. That's a clever solution to the battery life problem. It is, as long as it stays that way. Right. As long as it works. And again, it takes standard Aimpoint micro mounts. Cool. Um, it does come with a full box that comes with a the full height mount for one third co witness. It comes with a little mount if you want a little tiny thing. It comes with an Allen wrench. Uh, it comes with all sorts of fancy stuff. Some instructions, which you can tell I did not read thoroughly. Just There's a mount. Comes with a little rubber cover, which you can tell I don't bother with. Yep. And the wrench for uh, tightening and loosening the mount. And it says boldly, made in China. Made in China. Um, but at any rate, there it is. Uh, so I guess in general, with the exception of saying I can't give you a thumbs up in durability, I'm going to tell you that so far for a $200 or sub $200 red dot. It's done great. It's done great. Um, go for it. Give it a whirl. Yeah. Hopefully it'll work as well for you. The fact that it comes with a one-third co-witness mount and a little mount, perfect. You're kind of done. You just put on your gun and go. Yeah. So that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this kind of content and you like what you see. If you do, please consider supporting us on Patreon. That is what allows us to go ahead and, you know what, let's try a Hollow Sun. Yep. Because 
We don't know, and that Patreon money kind of paid for that, to be honest with you. And if you can't support us on Patreon, totally get it. Please just subscribe to our channels on both Full 30 and YouTube. Check us out on Facebook as well. We post yep. stuff on there that doesn't go on the video channel. That is true. And more importantly, share with your friends. Share everywhere. Share often. <laughs> Thank you very much.